about what's the difference between bias and perspective. On the one hand, we have to think about the history of the term perspective. So let's go, we have this etymology dictionary pulled up. Let's type in perspective. Let's see where it takes us. I kind of know where it's going to take us, but I'm going to pretend I'm surprised. Okay, so late 14th century, perspectif, the science of optics. A little surprising, maybe. Old French perspective, perspective, and directly from medieval Latin, perspectiva ars, the science of optics. From the feminine of perspectivus, of sight optical. From Latin perspectus, clearly perceived. So something that's clearly perceived is perspectus. Per, per in Latin, means like through, but when it's, in, when it's a um, prefix, it often kind of is intensifier. So we still have the idea of like spectacles, things that you see. So perspectus, something that's thoroughly perceived, clearly perceived. All right, so all of that good Latin stuff, let's skip to here. The English word is also attested from early 15th century as an ad adjective pertaining to the science of optics. So how do we get to that from where we, from that to where we are now? The sense of the art of drawing solid objects on a flat surface so as to give the appearance of distance or depth is attested by 1590s, probably by influence of Italian prospettiva, an artist's term. This is a term used by artists. The big person on this was Alberti. Alberti was the guy who wrote the treatise on how to make paintings or drawings in perspective and all the mathematical and artistic ideas of that. The thing that he wrote on painting, the little treatise he wrote, is a really cool and interesting historical thing to read if, you're, if you want to read about it. And it's kind of surprising. He says like a weird thing. He says, for instance, when he's making a metaphor about what painting is like, he's like, painters are like Narcissus. Because you think about perspective, you think perspective is all about getting it the illusion of perfect reality. But the actual metaphor that Alberti gives is Narcissus. And the Narcissus myth, there's different versions of it. But in one, Narcissus like looks in the water, right? And he sees his own reflection. And this is what we get from the Freudian idea of narcissism. It's being someone who's in love, who is kind of has their sexual libido becomes attra attached to their image of their of themselves. Okay, that's Freud has a whole big and weird paper on narcissism. Uh, we tend to it tends to kind of have filtered down just to mean someone who's kind of like self involved. But Freud meant a whole much broader and more interesting thing by narcissism. But in the in the Alberti's idea of narcissism, the narcissus misrecognizes his reflection as another person, which is why when he tries to go kiss it, he drowns. So it's a moment of misrecognition of reflection. And it's interesting to think about that in relationship to Burke's idea of terms as both reflecting, sele selecting, and deflecting part of reality. Even the reflection can be misleading. Can it? Or not misleading, but lead us in a way to think about, about reality in a way that's maybe not what really is. What would that be? So, uh, so perspective comes from this... Uh, Oh, it's a, he goes on to say, the meaning proper or just proportion, appropriate relation in the mind of the parts of a subject to one another is recorded around 1600. Hence the figurative meaning, mental outlook over time. So in a lot of these paintings, because the theory of, of perspective adult, uh, developed by the Italian Renaissance was very different from what had come before in European painting, uh, and, and arts, and, and what was in other cultures, because there were all other theories of how to do illusions of various kinds. It really required that you stand in one spot, because there was this plane of vision that was going to come out right from a mathematical point that had no distance, and that was kind of where you were going to be. So the subject, the painting actually tells you where to stand. The painting has the perspective, and you have to stand there in order to see it properly. And you can see this really brilliantly done in a painting called The Ambassadors by Hans Holbein, because he does something called anamorphosis, where he has two different perspectives in the painting. You see these two ambassadors that kind of got their drip on, they're like, look, there's a lot going on in the painting. But then there's this weird smear across the front of it, which if you stand at the right point, and I, I went to the um, National Gallery in London and tried to do this, and it was a lot, it was a little different than what I had imagined, like where you would have to stand, and people still argue about it. But if you stand at a certain angle, you can kind of see a skull emerge. But then you go back to the other perspective. So perspective might be, um, as opposed to bias, or, or what's related to perspective and bias, is that it's a certain kind of skewed line. That's literally what bias means, right? 
bias is a kind of skewed line of like where you have to stand. I would say that the, the, the difference, one difference we could play with is the perspective, the correct perspective on a painting is the painting that the, is the perspective the painting gives you. So the object kind of contains an idea about how you should perceive it. Whereas a bias is kind of your approach to the thing. That would be the difference I would make. That's a little bit playful. And maybe it was a little long-winded, but that's the difference that I would make between perspective and bias. And so thinking about, well, what's the kind of uh, correct subject position for this text, for this situation? What ought I to do? I think that's a good thing to understand. You want to understand where, you ought, where you're supposed to stand. But I don't think that that means that you have to obey that. When I went to a museum with an art professor, he said, I said, what's the way, if you were going to tell someone how to experience art in a museum, with that, you know, they don't know everything that you know. How would they, how could they experience it better? And he said, move a lot. Move around the art as much as you can. You will have a better experience. Doesn't mean like constantly move, but if you do the thing where you like go to a painting, stand in front of it in one place, look at it for six seconds and go to the next one, it's just going to be basically like flipping through a photo gallery. You only get the experience of the painting if you bring your own bias to it where you don't stand right in front of it. So I would say that's the difference between bias and perspective. What do you think about that, Alan? What's this, uh, what's this one? Oh, is this the, I think that's supposed to be a link to the ambassadors. Yeah. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. You can kind of see that it's a skull. You can, you, I mean, if you know it's a skull, you can kind of see that it is. But it's at like such an extreme bias that it would be hard to guess if you weren't looking for it, I think. Uh, what exactly it was. Yeah. Yeah, intention and directing the intention. It kind of all is about these ideas of like, is the intention in me or is the intention in the thing? And you can kind of see it from all the different perspectives or different attitudes, different biases. But um, recognizing that it's not just about a question of truth, but a question of understanding. That's the big difference here. We, we're not just concerned with whether what something is, says is true or false. We just want to understand it. Because sometimes understanding something that's false might take quite a bit of effort. It might lead you to learn quite a bit. Whereas knowing something that is true, that's trivially true, doesn't really matter. Perspective is where you are. That's true as a photographer. That's an interesting development, right? Because it does initially come from the... The thing is, it is where you are if you are the painter, too, because Alberti says you should like do this pinhole technique, but then you recreate your perspective as the photographer or as the painter in the photograph. So now the photo person looking at the photograph, it's a little different with a photograph. It's, it's more complicated with photographs, I would say, but especially for this kind of classical idea of Italian perspective, that now the subject, I have to be in a place that would model where I'm supposed to stand. But I think, yeah, it could go either way. That's true. But I think also probably when you're a photographer, you have to think about, if I stand here, what will my audience see? What, what will people get from the photograph? And the mediation between the photographer, you the photographer, the camera, the subject that you're photographing, and the future viewer, this whole complex relationship is all part of what goes into thinking about photography. So it's technical, it's artistic, there's composition, it's, it depends on natural things. All of these things are involved. It's funny with the pinhole because you're going to one point, but we have two eyes and there's a parallax. That's one of the reasons why Italian perspective was really weird because Euclid, Euclid's optics, which was the ancient text on this, recognized that we were binocular, but you couldn't, it, it would have been extremely difficult with the mathematics that they had at the time to translate that into perspective. And so they, so even though they had the binocular theory much earlier, it came up with a, a form of art that wasn't very illusionistic. So again, this fiction of, of vision as a cone that goes to a single point, that was a fiction. And, and they knew it was a fiction. People th think that they didn't know. They knew it was a fiction. They used that fiction in order to create something that was more realistic. Isn't that weird? That if you, to get that realistic effect, sometimes you have to actually violate something that you know about reality.